Hey Mark, can you tell me about declaring properties? Sure, Rory, we can do that. Let me bring up uh, my type shortcut list. I'm going to put this over uh, in its own vertical tab group over here. So you can see this because we've kind of covered these before, but in case you're seeing this for the first time, I want to have this list over here. So I've got my airline class and I want to create a new property for it. I can use the letter A for an auto implemented property and follow it with one of these type shortcuts that you see over here. So for example, if I want a string property for the name of this airline, I would type in A and then the letter S. Okay. Auto implemented string property. And then I would just type in the name of the property. I've got an orange box, which means it's a text field. If I hit enter on that text field, it's going to go to the next entry point, which in this case is the end of the line. Okay. So I just hit enter. I'm at the end of the line right there. Good stuff. So pretty easy to do. Yeah. If I wanted to create an auto implemented property of type integer, for example, our employee count, that would be. Now that'd be A again. And in this case, you want a numeric, so I. Right, A. And we're going to expand our template. So for some people, that would be space, and for others, it would be tab, depending on your settings. If neither of those keys work for you when you try this, go into the Code Rush setup wizard and set up your templates. And so here I can just type in employee count and hit enter. The impact of this is that the amount of keys that you have to hit to declare new things, it's a very small number. Yes. Let's go in and now let's add a number of airplanes, but let's make this a property with backing store. Sure. So let me just make a note up here. You use A for auto implemented properties, followed by a type shortcut. Mm -hmm. And for regular property, you use the letter P. So a very simple mnemonic, P for property, A for auto implemented property. Nice and simple. Let's try it. So we want to have P followed by an integer because we'll have a count again here. So PI. Yep. And then we're going to say airplane count. And notice what's happening here, Rory. We've got the backing store. The backing store is in the coding style that I set up inside the options dialog. Sure, yeah. And as I change the name of the property, it also changes the name of the backing store for me automatically. The orange block again indicates I'm in a text field. When I hit enter on this, I'm going to jump out of it and get down here. So I'll hit enter right now, and I'm down and outside of that. That's fantastic. I mean, just, just look at the, the sheer quantity of characters that have been output here. The intelligence, as you say, behind the construction of the backing store and, and the naming that is in line with your conventions. The, the sheer number of keys you, you've not had to press there. I mean, what was it? We had P, I, in your case, I believe, space. So that's three characters plus what would otherwise be the mandatory name of your, your property anyway. It's not like you can get around that. But three characters versus all of those other ones that we see there, that's a massive saving. It's a massive savings, it is. Now, if by chance you start out here and you want to convert, you can do that too. You can hit the Code Rush key and choose Convert to Property with Backing Store. Okay. And there you go. And now it's given you a backing store again, following my naming conventions that I told Code Rush about. Excellent. Same thing here. I can come in here and convert to backing store. And if I have nothing happening inside my getter and setter, I can actually go the reverse as well. I can convert to an auto implemented property, or I can take all of them and convert all of them into an auto implemented property. And you can see here on the preview, we're going to get rid of all of this code and replace it with those three lines right there. Sure. But before I do that, let me show you one more thing. Let's go into like, say, for example, airline count. And let's imagine that in here we have some sort of expensive operation, time consuming. Maybe we've got to allocate memory or take some time. And we only want to do that if the airplane count that's coming in that's being signed is different from the backing store variable. Yeah, makes sense. That's often the purpose behind having backing store. So let me show you how you fix that. You just put the carrot up here at the start. You hit the code rush key and you choose introduce setter guard clause. And it adds just this simple bit of code at the very beginning. Okay, very good. Now we can put our expensive operation, whatever that's going to be, right in here. So I'm guessing that if you were to choose to try to um, to collapse all of these these large properties down to auto implemented properties, Code Rush is going to see that that is no longer a simple property and maybe not process that one. Yep. In fact, there you can see in the preview, I've got convert all and it says only convert over name and employee count because it can see now that we've got some code happening here inside of the, our airplane count. Good stuff. Very nice. Okay. I want to wrap up the video now. We're going to have another video declaring properties advanced where we're going to talk about read only, write only, and adding backing store to uh, properties declared by Visual Studio that just have exceptions being thrown in them. Fantastic.